Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the pixellab.net. Today I have a super exciting tutorial for you. And uh, honestly, this one has been a game changer for me. I'm gonna show you the complete workflow from tracking a piece of footage in After Effects uh, with the Foundry Camera Tracker and then how to bring it into Cinema 4D in full on 3D space and how you can add 3D elements to your footage. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final product here. This is a piece of footage that I shot and then I went ahead and tracked it and added some 3D elements into the scene. So for me, I've always been pretty daunted by 3D camera tracking uh, because of the price and also because of the math and complexity of it. Um, I hate math, I hate equations and expressions, all that kind of stuff. Um, I just kind of want to be able to create what I'm envisioning simply and without dealing with all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of what has held me up in the past. A lot of the problem with other tracking programs, besides being thousands and thousands of dollars, is that you have to go back and forth between different programs and you have to learn new interfaces and uh, it's all pretty complex. Well, a lot of this is changing with the Foundry's new camera tracker because you do everything inside of After Effects, which is awesome. Uh, it's only $200 too, which is ridiculous. So, and for what it can do, I think it's an absolute must have for uh, any motion designer. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. For the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you the After Effects side of things, how to prep your footage, how to track it with the Foundry Tracker, and how to get it ready to export for cinema. Now another note is that this whole workflow is possible because of the new After Effects to Cinema 40 plugin which Maxon released a couple months ago. So this whole workflow is kind of new and it's also extremely simple and exciting. So you're going to love this. Um, in the next tutorial, make sure to check back for that. I'm going to show you the Cinema 40 end of things. But first, let's jump into After Effects and let's get this party started. I've got my footage here and I've dropped it into a composition. If I ram preview this, you can see we've got rotation, we've got uh, 3D movement uh, positionally, and we've also got a lot of kind of jittery handheld effects. So this is going to be a good test for the camera tracker. So let's go ahead and add our foundry, the foundry camera tracker. And here we go. So the first thing that we need to do is track our features. And if we go ahead and go down to our tracking twirl down, you're gonna notice that we have 150 features. Now if we go ahead and check on preview features, we're gonna see all these tracking points. And I usually leave this at 150, it seems to work for now. And then we have all these buttons right here, and you basically use these from the top down, starting with track, then solve, then create. So we're gonna start by tracking our features and then it's gonna start tracking forward. It's gonna go through the entire clip and then it's gonna reverse and go back. Um, it spawns tracking points as it's going through in new places and then when it goes back it kind of reverse engineers those back to the beginning. So it's a very complex mathematical thing that it's doing and it's based on parallax. So things in the foreground are gonna move faster than things in the background and the whole equation is based on that. And then the representation that it comes up with is a full-on 3D environment, which is pretty dang cool. So I'm going to go ahead and let this track. All right, so the tracker is done now. We've got all of our tracking points, and this is what it looks like. So right after it's done tracking, we're going to want to go to the next button down, which is Solve Camera. And uh, Solving Camera is going to kind of show us the quality of the track. So we're going to get a little bit of data in a pop-up window right here. So this number right here is the important one, this uh, total RMS reprojection error. And this is basically the quality of the track. The higher the number, the worse the track, the lower the better. And I've found that about one pixel is a good track and that's something to work with. Anything higher than that, it's a little bit sketchy. It might slip a little bit. So the projection error basically is this one might possibly slip about two pixels, which is, it's okay, but it's not too great, right? There are some complicated ways that we can change this by going down to our refine uh, twirl down and we've got a bunch of different things here. I'm probably not gonna get into that right now. I'm gonna show you a couple little things you can do uh, that are simpler. All right, so one thing that we can do is if we go to our display, we can take our tracks and go to point quality instead. And this is going to give us a color representation of the accuracy of these tracks. So the green ones are good tracks, the red ones are bad, and then uh, there's some kind of in between with the oranges and yellows. So there's different ways that we can modify this. One way is that we can just go in here and start clicking tracks and hitting delete. So we can go ahead and go to all of our red tracks and just delete all those guys. Um, a lot of times I'll just do this because I find it to be a little bit quicker. Um, there's other ways that you can do it also. You can twirl down your refine uh, twirl down right here. And in here we have, let's see if I can 
read this right here. Okay, so we have our threshold for frame error max. So if we go into our, our graph chart here, and then if we go down to all of the keyframes for this uh, camera tracker, uh, let's go to refine. And in refine, we have all of our keyframes here. So let's check out our per frame error max, and we get this kind of chart right here. The higher the spikes are the ones that are not as good of a quality track. So we can go ahead and click this button to have this in our graph, and then we'll go down to our frame error max. And what we can do is take this down, and you can see this, this line right here. It's going to start cutting off some of these uh, points. And as we get down a little bit farther, we might want to just delete all of these and then hit delete rejected and then it's going to modify this guy. So then uh, we have a little bit of a better track. So let's go ahead and go back to um, solve camera and let's hit solve again. And this is going to kind of bake in all of those changes that we made. So now let's see what our number is. So our number is 2.06, and I think that's a little bit lower than before. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump through here and start deleting a few points and try to get it a little bit better. All right, so I went through and I deleted all of the dark orange and the red tracking points, and that probably took me about uh, maybe two minutes. So it was pretty fast. And let's go ahead and hit solve camera again and see if that dropped from uh, two pixels and see if it dropped any farther. All right, perfect. So we're at 1.01 pixels. And like I said before, around one is usually a pretty solid track. So I think we are all set here. So let's go ahead and twirl this stuff up. All right, so the next button down, now that we've uh, got the solved camera how we want it, is create scene. So we're going to go ahead and click on create scene. And you'll notice that now we have a camera. Let's go ahead and turn off the, uh, the graph. So we have a camera and we have a null. And these are going to be very, very important um, for when we go to Cinema 4D. Okay, so, and this is just a side note. If you don't see your tracking points, make sure to go to the footage and click on the camera tracker and things will come up again. And also down on the bottom, when you're highlighting your camera tracker, you're going to have a little menu right here, which you can command and click on. And there's a bunch of actions that you can take. So what we want to do now is make a null object, um, which we can bring over into Cinema 4D. So, Let's go ahead and pick a null object, um, something that's sticking on the table pretty well. So it looks like this one right here actually might be the ticket. It looks like it's sticking on there pretty well. So let's go ahead and command click on this point and let's go to actions. And then I think we can go to create and null object. Make sure you click on it and then command create null object. And now you can see we get a null object there. Let's go ahead and scrub through here. And it looks like it's sticking really pretty decent. Um, so null objects are one way you can do things. Um, another thing that's pretty accurate is making a plane. So let's go ahead and click on here and let's say that we want a plane on this pool table. So let's go ahead and click on multiple uh, points on here that look like they're residing on the pool table, right? So all of these are on the pool table and then we can hit command and click and go to create and then we'll make a solid. And it's going to make a solid that sticks um, based on where all of those points are. And obviously, um, we're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking on this guy. But we can go into our rotation and start tweaking this a little bit. So if we go ahead and turn it this way, and uh, we can maybe stretch it out a little bit, and we'll slide it down on the Y position. And uh, basically, we can just modify this so that it uh, kind of fills up the whole pool table. And this is going to be important once we get to cinema, kind of give us a representation of where the pool table is. And then we'll be able to uh, put our pool balls on top of it. So uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but just kind of try to rough it in there a little bit. And you'll want to be careful not to change uh, some of these orientations, uh, which will throw it off. You want to make sure that it sticks on the pool table. So, And then you can kind of scrub through and make sure uh, that it's stuck on there pretty good. And it's also fine to go ahead and make multiple nulls, just in case one is not doing quite as well, or if it's slipping a little bit, you can use one of the other nulls. So we'll just make a couple of these null objects, maybe one here, create null. And these are all ready to go uh, to Cinema 4D. So if you remember the uh, tutorial I did before on File, um, Export, and then Cinema 4D Exporter, it's the new plugin for Max on Cinema 4D. And if you remember, that's going to bring over the, the uh, camera, it's going to bring over any nulls, and it's going to bring over solids. And that's exactly why I set up um, the solid and the nulls. So that we're going to be able to go in there and replace those with uh, things in 3D. 
So that is it. All we got to do is go to File, Export, Cinema 4D Exporter, and we'll save that. Before I wrap this up, let me show you one thing really quick. Uh, let's go ahead and put a text in here and let's type in the Pixel Lab. Now we're going to go ahead and make this 3D and it's going to disappear. Well, what we can do is actually parent it to this null object. And then it's going to inherit the properties from this null object. And if we go into our position and zero these out, then it will be where that null is. And then we can just scale it down. And now if we scrub through here, you can see that our text is actually in 3D space, which is really cool. If you want to just use this plugin in After Effects, you can add you know, a logo on top of the pool table. You can add floating text, kind of like the fringe style. You can do all that stuff in After Effects, which is very, very cool. Because that whole process was maybe five minutes to set all this up. And it's so intuitive, and uh, you can see it sticking on there really nice. So that is the power of the camera tracker. Next time, we're going to jump into Cinema 4D and show you the power of bringing in this 3D data. And uh, it's going to blow your mind, I guarantee it. Check back for that, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.